Dan Gallagher. Welcome to a brand new series here on the CBC called Ear to the Grim. A chance for us to introduce you to some great new bands across this glorious nation of ours. From Vancouver, B.C. to St. John's, Newfoundland. Tonight, we take you to Toronto to meet up with the Reostatics, a band currently celebrating the release of their second album on the Intrepid label called Whale Music. Now, in the business, these guys are really liked by other musicians. So much so, in fact, that Neil Peart, Rush drummer and rock god agreed to appear on their record. Here they are, four lads from Etobicoke, yucking it up in our director's backyard, the Rio Statics. We're just listening uh, to the ultrasound tape to hear my bass solo. This is the only time he's ever played it right. Last is about a, a second and a half. A microsecond. That's the only the chance that I can do shines. some barbecues. Let's go light up some carcinogens. I think our friends are coming over. grew up in Etobicoke. Uh, Martin grew up in Rexdale, actually. I think it's different. Uh, I met Dave Bedini in, in math class in grade nine and uh, hated him. And he hated me. And I think we made a date to uh, step outside and fight after class once, but for some reason never got around to it. I needed a, an accomplice, and he was it. And uh, so we formed a band with varying like, revolving door drummers. I played hockey with a guy named Graham Kirkland, who was a famous jazz drummer, extraordinaire. And he called me up one day and said, hey man, do you want to you wanna try playing with these guys? And I said, uh, uh, okay. So then, see, so I gave Graham the address of where I was going to be, which was at my drum teacher's house. And then outside the house late that night, a, a horn came on a car, rang on a car, and then this kind of greasy looking guy with his dad came up in the car and rolled the electronic window down. And he handed me a tape, and of course it was it was none other than the greasiest man alive, David Eney. And there you go. After that it was just a bunch of uh, evolutions and metamorphoses. Yeah, I joined the band about four years ago, and they had been together already for quite a while. They were probably the first band I saw when I came downtown downtown to see bands. <laughs> They came down 1988. Thousand spacecraft like petals on the earth. And they had big eyes and they watched like spies. They found someone who no one would believe. There you were in your Underwear All alone Drawing comics For your church And we Took you up And we Gave you drugs And placed you on a table For observation Give me a deep kiss I am longing For distraction and keep you occupied If this comes as some surprise I am an alien And you won't serve you I must keep you strong We hadn't read the, the Forming a Rock and Roll Band workbook We didn't have the manual so we kind of sort of wrote our own We sounded like the replacements Someone said we should have stayed in the basement. Instead of glittering our noise on the earth. But the dinosaurs are 
within like you know five minutes of each other so why you know get a rehearsal space that was in the city just to be cool or just to be part of the scene it was way easier after last class at high school to just walk down the road and all meet you know next to the variety store and go into the basement and, and play music it was simple it was easy it made it really nice it made it a real sort of familial thing too and uh it's weird i don't think my, my folks i don't think my dad really understood or accepted that this was any kind of life or any kind of future any kind of existence until like four years ago maybe i don't even know if he still does uh we rehearsed in uh, dave clark's parents basement for uh i guess the first maybe five years of our career and uh never got any complaints except maybe when we took the two beers that were in the bottom of the fridge <laughs> that's when they complained otherwise uh they seemed to ex accept it um, the only thing Dave's mother minded was uh, was Dave Clark playing his Frank Zappa records too loud, you know, early Saturday morning. Other than that, she seemed to like the Rio Static. She just didn't like Frank Zappa. How many two fours can you fit in a trunk? This program is brought to you by Molson Canadian Rocks. It's coming for you. Yeah, we waste a lot of time go, uh, making sure the other guy's doing his job, and, and uh, it's not a very efficient unit. Uh, I don't know if I ever expected the Rio Statics to be together for 10 years and not be huge superstars by that point. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever, ever really thought about well, I guess I have thought about the fact that we've been together so long and that we're still uh, a relatively low level of, according to uh, our game plan of success. Um, but it doesn't... Uh, uh, every time we come up with a new song, it's a little better than the last one. Word came down, it crashed through my door From the 21st floor I was thinking about leaving early for lunch When he told me to shut off my press His face turned green, his white shirt was wet Like he'd just seen an accident We threw our masks into a pile the trucks pulled away for good holy mac and our show 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 First time we played horses, uh, I think everyone got got nervous after we played it. Everyone was shaking a little bit, and that was I knew that it worked right then. And if, that's another thing about being in this band: everyone was able to interpret it in their own way and plug it in and make it one and work. On the other side of the coin, uh, maybe there is a, maybe the fact that we're friends first and foremost um, affects the uh, the music side of our relationship adversely. The only disadvantage to, to playing in a band with your friends who, are, who, are, who you're with uh, all the time is that you can be very caustic with each other. And it's kind of like a cliche. It's like being married. And because playing music is like burying your soul constantly because you're telling people your inner thoughts, whether they can hear them or not. Joey pulled himself to his feet his body back up the bank And was back down there I 
real casual sneaking round the back A shop at the cross the track And to the gate beside the poor nipples was changing class He chased me halfway through the park So I ran into the woods And I'm very good at the woods So I was a record body count uh, is story of my general experiences in high school and uh, I was actually chased through the park by a teacher. <laughs> so it's it's quite true, and that's that's the funny thing about it is that I'm saying these things, and that they sound really funny, but they're actually true. So I'm not telling a joke; I'm telling the truth. Uh, the ending is exaggerated, just to. Put a, it might be perhaps a bit over dramatic, but to drive home the song and uh, to express a kind of the kind of sadness and, and misery that a lot of kids did experience in high school uh, or on the peripheries of high schools. There's a record body count this year. Before he died. Uh, if one person left the rheostatics, it wouldn't be the rheostatics. It'd be something completely different. It couldn't go on being the rheostatics. We didn't know why Dave wanted. Michelle, a sizzling one-hour special starring country female vocalist of the year, Michelle Wright. Michelle Wright stars in her first ever television special, Michelle. Saturday, October 3rd at 8 p.m., 9 Atlantic, 9.30 in Newfoundland on CBC. California dream line Circling on a big way It's quiet underwater As high as I can swing to Carbonated tide pools It's quiet underwater Questionable things like Dolphins open people to swim Say everything peculiar to me Martin is very floral in all aspects. Dave Clark's one of, one of the best drummers around. He just takes it and absolutely uh, twists it into something that it wasn't before. And it's usually almost always uh, very, very pleasing and interesting. Things I like about Dave Clark, really, I mean, as a person, is that he's always there when I need him, always. Dave Bedini, um, I like his haircuts. They're reasonably priced and they look good on him. Dave Bedini. I like Tim because he has the deepest thoughts of anyone I know. Is that good? Yeah, a little more. What do I like about Tim? He can take any messy situation and straighten it out and fold it up into neat packages. Tim's a very clean player, and it's very, very clean all around. <laughs> what do I like about Martin? Uh, he's a party animal at heart, and uh, that inspires me at, at, at times to take the odd drink. <laughs> Trying to love 
about Dave Bedini is his lovely disposition, his incredible urge to always argue with me, and otherwise his, his beautiful, gregarious personality, and his, his ability to uh, say what he means all the time, and, and then once in a while to give you a good Bedin. His way of playing is really uh, an attack, and it's... Uh, uh, quite bizarrely spontaneous. I think that's what he has to add to the band. That's what makes him distinct uh, from us. What I like about Martin is he inspires me. Read about your band in the entertainment news And it struck me how you sounded so cynical well, for every ocean ranger and penny per reserve, you are wasted in a tavern with other wasted birds. Well, what about the band? What about the five-man electrical band? The day they made the charts and Billboard magazine. What day was that? All the Irish stories couldn't teach you. So, this is a happening place. Oh, come on, there's supposed to be a lot to see here. Hey, Gord. 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 Are you all right? I didn't think anyone else survived. Gord, what would you like to drink? <laughs> what would you like to drink? He'll have a Canadian, same as us. You stay with the tour, Gord. Gord. Molson Canadian, what beer's all about. To make my nachos, I lay the chips down with the curls facing up and heap on so much cheese, salsa, refried beans, and jalapenos, you can barely lift a chip. But thanks to Paul Mollis, lifting off the goo from the dish is no problem. It even gets up the stuff that was zapped on from the microwave. And Paul Mollis softens hands while you do dishes. So, before my tongue cools off, I'm already finished. Paul Mollis, you cook, we'll clean. This program is brought to you by Molson Canadian Rocks. It's coming for you. People interpreted the Rio Statics as being sort of a goofy, happy-go-lucky, we're Doug and Bob, Canada's great A kind of band. But the resolve in the end, essentially, is, is that there is a certain happiness about being a Canadian band. There's a certain, a certain contentment, despite, I mean, despite all those cliches that are dragged out by critics and musicians about there being no people here, about the geography being unmanageable, about commercial radio being pro-American. There's, there's certainly that, but there's a certain advantage to, to being a musician here. Wake up, raise the curtains from the deep provincial eyes. Speak out, for I am certain. Let us know disguise. Soldiers, stop hopping traffic. Couldn't keep these wheels at bay. Their guns smoked and the sun broke. We hauled away. Mothers, not thy country. Take two flags, make a say. Say, Dominion. The 
song is far away. I, th I think my self-realization as a nationalist came upon this late evening in Dublin after spending the evening drinking at this pub about 10 minutes out of town. As soon as the pub closed, I had to catch the train back into the city. And while I was on the train, the, the, the train was packed, like 200 drunken Dubliners going crazy. And, and I looked really weird. I had a little bit of a beard, as I do today. Some guy came up to me and asked me if I was from Libya. And I said, no, I'm not from Libya, I'm from Canada. And the Irish, being the, 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 the exuberant people that they are, asked me if I would sing a Canadian song for them, if I would stand up and sing. Like, nothing like that would ever happen to you in Toronto, right? Torontonian mice on the subway. People don't talk to each other. In Dublin, it's completely different. I didn't know any Canadian songs. So, big, huge, fat woman in a flowery dress sitting behind me turned around and said, I know a Canadian song. And she stood up and the train became completely stilled. She stood up and she sang the song called Canadian Pacific. It completely blew me away. She knew more about, she had something, she had some sort of contact with my culture, more of a, more of an understanding and more, she knew more about it. She knew a song from our country. The only song I knew was the national anthem. So when I got back home, I thought, right, time to check it out, try, time to find out what's really there. Did you get my message on the people's I rode it in Alberta Across the very spine And I'd rather ditch the borders The trail from east to west Get the booking agent to Find another band Anyways, I think Canadian people, especially now, have to be stirred. They, they, I think they want something. It's not necessarily, you know, it's not uh, editorials articulating what, you know, every Canadian knows about its own popular culture. It's about, it's a certain emotion, it's a certain conviction that has to come across in the music. Well, the Eagle is like a variety store. Deal and end dope by the exit door. Went into work like a worm at the core. week on Ear to the Ground, Thomas Trio and the Red Albino. Thomas Trio and the Red Albino on Ear to the Ground. Next Monday night at 7.30, 8 o'clock in Newfoundland, right here on CBC Television.